Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're doing an update today on my ham radio adventure. When we last talked about my amateur radio exploits, we were talking about my Anytone 878 UV2 Plus here. And in my last video, I showed you how I was making some packet radio calls on this. And I was also able to talk to somebody through the International Space Station as it orbited overhead. And I think I've hit kind of the limit to what this radio can do. And I like this a lot. In fact, I'm going to certainly be keeping this radio and will likely be using it, uh, especially when I'm out on the road. But I need more transmit power, especially for communicating with some of the packet radio things around me and also uh, for trying to do more long distance communications because this radio covers UHF and VHF but doesn't have a lot of transmit power. It only does about six or seven watts. And it also cannot do uh, HF transmissions. And as an amateur radio operator, a technician licensee, I have access to the 10 meter band, kind of a smaller sliver of it. And I wanted to get into some of the weak signal data transmissions that you can do there along with maybe a little bit of voice on 10 meters and eventually I'll get my next license, the general license, and then I'll have access to all of these additional bands. But I'm taking baby steps in this ham radio adventure as I go. And in order to do more in this hobby, I needed to acquire more equipment. So I have gone out and bought some antennas. I've bought a new radio, I bought a power supply. And what I thought I would do in this video is do what I call a ham haul, where I show you all the stuff that I got. And in a future video, once I get everything figured out and hooked up, we'll do a video of me doing some transmissions over longer distances with all of these new pieces of equipment. Now, before we get into this, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that everything in this video I paid for with my own funds, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video and nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what I got on my ham haul. All right, so let's start off with the cable that I got to connect my antennas up. Now I only got one cable here so far to start with because I can only do one band at a time. And my intention with my new setup here is to spend a little more time on that 10 meter band initially to explore a part of the spectrum I haven't explored yet, but I did buy a UHF and VHF antenna. Uh, this is DX400 cable that I got from DX Engineering. And it's 100 feet, more than I would need later when my antennas get installed, but I do have some friends that are gonna help me out with this project. So I anticipate maybe cutting this cable up and putting some new connectors on. And this of course has your uh, standard, what is this, a PL295 uh, connector on here. And this is what will plug into the radio and also into the antenna. This is outdoor rated, it's 50 ohm cable. Uh, it's probably more length than you want for like a UHF VHF antenna because you do get signal loss over longer stretches. But I will eventually be cutting this up and trying to keep the antenna for UHF VHF activities as close to the radio as possible. Now let's take a look at the antennas that I got, and this will generate some discussion, I think. So let me, st actually, let me start off with the UHF VHF antenna, which is probably not as controversial. So I got a uh, diamond, uh, what is this? An X50A, and it's still in the packaging here. I haven't taken it out yet, but this is a vertical antenna. Um, you set it up on a post and get it up as high as possible. And this is what I plan to use for all the local UHF, VHF stuff, including some of my packet radio discussions. And whoops, the, the discussion area though, will come for, from my choice of HF antenna. And I wanna show you a blog post that I was following that kind of led me in this direction. So there's a, a blogger by the name of Tom Costello, and I'll pull up his, uh, page here so you can see what I'm looking at. And he uh, detailed what he was doing on 10 meter as a technician. And that's exactly what I wanted to kind of mirror here. And what he set up was a dipole with two of these MFJ 1610T antennas. And I don't have enough room to like take it out and show you exactly how it looks, but there's basically a fiberglass component and then a whip antenna that you screw in at the bottom. And you get two of these, and there's another piece of equipment. Let me go get that real quick. And that other piece of equipment is the MFJ347. And this is a mount to create that dipole. So basically you screw uh, both of these whip antennas into uh, this leg here and the other one over here. And then the antenna connector is right here. 
And I'll show you the picture from uh, the Costello blog here to give you an idea as to how this works. So this is that connector here. And you can see one of the antennas going down and the other one going up. And this wire is going back to his radio. And he was able to do a lot of weak signal transmissions over 10 meter with this setup. So that is what I am going to replicate initially. Uh, as I go further into this, this is not going to do it for some of the other bands. So I will eventually get another HF antenna that can cover a wider swath of the spectrum. But right now, as I'm in this technician phase, I can't do much beyond 10 meters anyhow. So I want to start here and then we'll look for other options in the future. And that, of course, will be a great opportunity for future videos. Now, as far as mounting the antennas are concerned, the last thing you want is for me to get up on a roof and start drilling holes in the side of the house. I am going to get some help with that soon. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to get something that I could set up in the yard and then just kind of take down when I was done for the day. And what I bought along with all my stuff here is this MFJ tripod that has these fiberglass poles that attach to it. It looks pretty heavy duty. It was actually much heavier duty than it looked in the pictures and it can extend up pretty high. So I'm pretty sure that my HF dipole here with the fiberglass extenders is going to allow me to get this thing set up in the yard and have it start transmitting to get going here. And then eventually I will mount things in a more proper fashion, but it looks like uh, this will get me going, which was my intent here in the short term. So now let's take a look at the base station radio that I chose and we'll see uh, what it looks like and why I chose it and we'll unbox it too. So the radio that I went with is the Yaesu FT991A and I had a lot of good feedback on this radio both from uh, YouTube videos that I've watched, from reviews that I've read, and from friends who are familiar with it. So I figured this might be one to go with. It is a little pricey but it does everything that I want to do in one unit. Now its transmit power is 100 watts total, but it's split up. So 50 watts goes out over the HF, which is more than enough for the weak signal stuff I want to do, I think. And the VHF UHF gets the other 50 watts. And where I'm located, I can hit most of the repeaters that I want to hit. And I think 50 watts will be more than adequate to reach all of those. But at some point, maybe I will go with something higher powered. But at this point, I think this is going to work out pretty well. Another thing I like about the radio is that it's got a waterfall display. So as I'm exploring the bands, looking to see if people are talking, I will get some indicator of uh, signal activity as I am scrolling around. So that was another feature that I found to be attractive on this one. I don't have to just listen. I can see it uh, on the radio as I'm just turning the dial. So let's unbox it and we will hook it up in a future video. So this will be a teaser for more things to come. But let's see what's in the box here. So here is the instruction manual. As a new ham, I'm going to be spending a lot of time reading this. <laughs> and it looks like also they give you a uh, map grid uh, map here in the back. That's pretty cool. And we'll look at that stuff later. We have a dynamic microphone for making our contacts. And you can buy additional microphones. I have a bunch of uh, SM58s uh, that are really nice vocal microphones that I might find a way to hook up to this thing, but you got your push to talk here and some controls. Very nice. And we'll put that aside for a second. You have a power cable here. And what's important to note is that in the radio world, your power supply is not built into the radio. So us in the computer world are used to having integrated power supplies, not here. And I'll show you the power supply that I went with in a minute. And let me get the radio out of here without dropping anything. All right, here we go. It's a very attractive unit. And not that large either. And as many of you know, I am married and have children. So the space that I have is limited in this home. And where I want to put this thing is going to be in an area that is shared with the, the children. <laughs> so uh, in order to keep peace in the household, the integration of everything uh, is really important to have. So this is the unit here. It's pretty heavy, actually, which is uh, good, right? Um, and I'm looking forward to getting the power supply hooked up and everything uh, going from there. Let me show you the connectors on the back here. And we have those uh, PL59 uh, connectors. I believe I called them the incorrect number a few minutes ago. 
Um, so these, this is where the antennas plug in, and you can see you've got one for the UHF, VHF, and one for the HF. And then it also has a USB connector here, and this will connect up with the weak signal software that I want to use. So not only, I think, can the USB trigger the radio to transmit, uh, the radio's audio gets fed to the computer for doing all of that weak signal work, along with some of the packet work that I want to do on it as well. And it looks like we've got some connectors here for serial, for RTTY and data. So I got a lot to learn here, and this is one of these radios that can do a lot, so I can learn all on one unit here. And then eventually I'll probably get additional radios to kind of handle um, doing some additional tasks that I might want to dedicate a radio to. So I do want to set up a packet radio BBS at one point, and I don't want to have this radio tied up for that activity, so I'll probably get a cheap VHF UHF unit for that. And I also want to do some uh, APRS digipeding eventually as well to contribute to uh, that effort. So I will be getting more equipment in the future, but this is what I plan to start with, and it is quite heavy. Let me show you the power supply that I went with. Now, as heavy as the radio is, the power supply <laughs> is even heavier. Uh, what I went with was the power supply that Yesu recommended you use with the radio, which is the FP1030A. And let's have a look at that. And we'll be connecting this up to the radio with the cables that were included with it. And this is kind of par for the course in the radio world where you need that uh, separate external power supply. And I'm going to uh, take it out this way. And it's certainly big and heavy here, but it's also going to provide a lot of power to my radio, especially if I want to use it at its full potential here. And let's get it out here. Very attractive units. And so what you've got is a, a 6 amp component and a 25 amp component. And then you have a 10 amp uh, 12 volt socket here. So this would be similar to the uh, cigarette adapter you might have in your vehicle. And then you've got uh, some meters here to monitor voltage and amperage. So hopefully I don't uh, break anything <laughs> as I get everything hooked up to it. Um, but it should be fairly simple provided I plug things into the right color here. So the next step in this adventure is I am going to head out into the yard and get my antenna mounted up out there. And once I get everything to a point where I have figured it out, I will do an update video with you. Now, if you are a licensed ham operator, even a technician, uh, let me know in the comment stream because what I would love to do is do some weak signal chatting over JS8 call if we're able to pull it off. With, a, with as many viewers as possible. So leave me your call sign down below or send me an email to lon at lon.tv and maybe we'll set up a live stream where a bunch of us try to reach each other uh, using weak signal communications on the 10 meter band. So lots more to come on this one. Wish me luck. I am exploring a whole new area of technology that I don't have a lot of familiarity with, but I'm learning as fast as I can. And I appreciate any feedback that you have for my endeavors down below in the comments. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.